Welcome to Mihas International on this Wednesday the 30th of October. Uh, you may all be aware of a fire that broke out in Ben Almadna yesterday. Uh, it was around 6pm in the evening and just to confirm that fortunately, thanks to the rapid action of the security forces, there were no injuries, although 100 people had to be evacuated. Uh, Gabby Ray will be giving you the details about this in the local news section later in the programme. In the studio with me today, though, is Nani Hagigi, and he runs the Malaga Business Minds Group, and Elliot Kay, who is widely known as the coach with the hat. He's based in the UK and has been giving experiential workshops, and this is on networking and, of course, uh, collaboration for businesses. And he does this widely, but he's especially been doing it uh, this week for the Malaga Business Minds. Good evening, both of you. Good evening. Good evening. Lovely to have you both in the studio. Thank you. And um, I'm going to be chatting with you in a minute, Elliot, finding out about that hat as well. Of course. <laughs> uh, first of all, I think we should find out uh, about yourself, Nami, about Malaga Business uh, Minds Group. Um, now, I know you came to Spain about 13 years ago. What right. brought you to Spain? Well, I came for a holiday, really, um, and then decided to stay for about a year. Uh, that was the plan, and I uh, liked the place so much, 13 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> so it's just uh, originally from Persia, Iran, and mm -hmm. the temperature and the sun and the sea is very similar to my homeland, and mm -hmm. having lived in UK and Ireland for most of my life, um, just decided it was nice to get a, a you, change of temperature. Yeah, you, you felt more of an affinity. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Missing the sun very yeah, much. So Missing the warmth. <laughs> um, <laughs> You set up Malaga Business Minds. Uh, you set it up this year, I believe. Uh, what, That's right. what brought this about? Well, many reasons, really. In, initially, in May, um, I had Elliot Kay, the coach with a hat, visiting me uh, for holidays. <clears throat> and I happened to, in a conversation, I said, how would you like to give a talk? Because I On his holiday. On his holiday, <laughs> thinking. And it was his birthday, too. So I was very surprised when he said, I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> um, as part of his passion, he likes, he likes sharing his message with people. So, uh, and then we decided to uh, get together with uh, Internations, another group that have uh, a larger audience than I did at the time, because mm -hmm. this was the first one, first one we ever did. Um, so we invited a few people, but this was just a few days before the event went live that we uh, announced that Elliot K is going to be giving a talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and after we had over 100 people in the room, we decided, wow, there's a demand for this here. Mm -hmm. Because personally, I was traveling forwards and backwards to London for training, for being coached, and also getting empowered and getting tools and learning uh, because I just couldn't get access to anything in Malaga. So that was really our cue to get something started here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how it, it all began with that one event that in one May. Event. And what year. are the aims of the group? really to provide a platform where people can connect. Uh, the small business owners tend to feel very isolated. Uh, they don't have access necessarily to the type of seminars and um, coaching that's available in the UK. Basically, in London, every night of the week, you can go to different events and learn and connect and network, collaborate with people and meet like-minded people and socialize in that kind of environment, if you so wish. But again, then I would come back to Malaga and my friends aren't in business necessarily. So I had nobody to kind of consult with or talk to about my business. Um, and that seems to be the same with a lot mm -hmm. of my clients. So we decided to put this together. So they get access to expert advice. They get access to training, seminars, um, a chance to get together, socialize, network, collaborate mm -hmm. and put all these learnings together as well and practice and get feedback in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. And it seems to go down really well. We get excellent feedback. Um, just uh, on Sunday, we had our last event, uh, which was a workshop on networking, how to network effectively. Because most people think they network naturally, yeah. but to get results, you need to have a plan. You need to have a, there's a know-how involved. Mm -hmm. So uh, after the event, the next day, I got an email from one of the participants and said, I've put um, the things I learned yesterday, the, uh, the tips, and already I've got a client this morning. So yeah, you put them how, into practice. That's yeah, right. That's great. That's what it takes, yeah. putting them in practice. Uh, and 
it's, it also spurs you on to achieve even more once you've taken that step and you've seen it work. Absolutely. The first step is always the most challenging. Difficult. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, you meet regularly, don't you? Yes, we meet uh, once a month. We have a, a meeting in central Malaga, which has brought people from all the way from Marbella to Nerja, and it's a central point where mm -hmm. east meets west. Um, <laughs> because the people from Nerja up to Malaga don't tend to really like going all the way to Marbella. It's a long drive. It is, yeah. Uh, and vice versa. So setting up in Malaga seems to be very popular. We put in a very central location as well, so parking is easy, access is easy. And uh, the, uh, so that is working really well. Um, and every month we have a meeting. So in October we had two. We actually introduced workshops so we could actually go deeper and embed the learnings and practice there. Um, but we have free events which is open to the public. Mm -hmm. Preferably business owners will gain more yes. uh, from the events. And the next one coming up is the 14th of November. We have two, uh, two in October, um, one uh, once, once a, a month an evening event which starts around 8 o'clock and we have one hour presentation by an expert that I normally bring over from the UK mm -hmm. and afterwards they get access to talk to the experts, ask more questions and also network amongst themselves and we get a chance to connect them as well. Mm -hmm. Knowing who does what, we can actually put them in touch with each other and quite a lot of collaboration is beginning to, at this early stage, they're beginning to work for people so it's great to see the results. You can see the fruits of your labour. Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, Elliot, uh, you've Hi. got a very interesting um, career, really, I think. Um, you did start off as a professional dancer. You, you, uh, you, you uh, performed all over the world. Yeah. Um, but what made you change from doing the dancing, the world of dancing, to this type of thing? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, it was an injury, really. A, I started really late. I started when I was 21, so I was kind of always up against it. And it was literally, I got something called a disc hernia. Because I started so late, my back was really tight, uh, but I had really flexible hips. Yeah. So I ground away at the spine. And then eventually my, my back just went, no more, no more dancing, Mr. K. And I kind of had to pursue a path. And then what happened, I went kind of like, Typical entrepreneur, kind of lots of ideas, lots of yeah. different bits and bobs, and ended up, as a lot of people end up, in training. Uh, and I trained for some of the blue chip companies, for Sky Television, Talk Talk, you know, mm. a lot of sort of the big names in the UK. And I got known for my ability to really associate the brand into the training. And then one day someone said to me, have you ever thought about coaching? And I actually went, that's a ridiculous idea. All these coaches want is money. They don't really want to help yeah, people. Yeah. And I'd never really even met a coach. Yet that was my perception. But something really sat with me. And so I went into research it, And that's what I did. And I was like, wait a minute, you learn psychology. You learn all these different things about human behavior. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, it would make me a better trainer. So I bought the course, studied it. And then I was working with this one lady and it changed everything. She said to me something that stuck with me ever since. And she said to me, Elliot, I've realised through working with you that I need to be happy to lose weight and not lose weight to be happy. Yes. That was the sentence. And that's when I started to pursue my path as a, as a coach as and a really coach. develop it as a business owner. Uh -huh. And really, you know, I was like, that was my epiphany, my calling yeah. in West London, in my attic room. <laughs> I had this amazing <laughs> calling. And I was like, that's it. That's what I'm doing yeah. now, from now on. From now on. And, and um, what's the story with the hat? The hat, yes, that's an interesting story. So I could never find a hat that would fit me. I think we, we had that mm. conversation. And when I was in LA, I, I found this amazing kind of Justin Timberlake type hat. And I was like, that's it, it fits, I'm wearing it. And I didn't take it off. And I entered a competition called Britain's Next Top Coach. And I was also thinking, what can I do to stand out and be different? So I thought, okay, we'll film it in a radio station and I'll wear my hat. Because I knew a lot of coaches that would just stand there. So I did that. And as the results came in, a lot of the feedback was, we loved your video, we love your hat. <laughs> it's like, okay, didn't think much of it. Got through to the semi-finals mm -hmm. and then um, didn't wear my hat. So people were like, love the video, where was the hat? <laughs> so it's like, okay, there's something going on here with the hat. So we themed the final, which I made it through, uh, to coaching with hats. Very cheesy, uh, but very effective with Elliot Kay. I came third in that. And then when I started to come out more as a coach and started to do talks, people were like, you're the dude with the hat, you're the man in the hat, you're that man, the geezer with the hat. And I was like, okay, there's something here, there's some feedback here. So um, we could either do 
be stubborn and go, no, my name's Elliot Kay, and you will remember me as Elliot Kay, <laughs> or we could actually do something. And we turned it into a brand, and, and I say we because I have a business partner, not because I'm schizophrenic. Okay, <laughs> okay. Just, just for the just Thanks for, the record. for that. <laughs> just for the record there. So, uh, and that's, yeah, we launched it in 2010, and it's just gathered pace and pace, mm. and it's an icebreaker. Mm -hmm. People instinctively think of the cat in the hat. Yes, yeah, that's true. And they, they sort of like open up more, don't they? They don't exactly. think of you, you're over there and you're the trainer, you're the coach. And exactly. I'm the person that's going to learn from you. Exactly. And that's one of our things. We really want to help transform the image of coaching in the UK because mm. it can come across as quite dull or quite... Too disciplined, maybe. Sometimes. Yes. Yeah, yeah sometimes. And t talking about that, um, I suppose the discipline, the experience that you had from uh, training as a dancer and performing uh, helped you with this part of your career as well. Definitely. I mean, mm. the discipline of getting up, putting the hours in, doing the work that you need, um, you know, being an avid learner, the, knowing there's always another level that you never quite reach you know, and knowing there's something bigger than you out there, that it's not yeah. about you, it's about the people they're listening to, it's about the people that are working with you, you know, definitely helped me in that respect. It also helped me in terms of standing on stage, but when, when you stand on stage as a, as, a, as a coach, as a speaker, it's a very different art to dancing, mm -hmm. um, because obviously you're communicating to all the different learning styles, mm -hmm. while dancing can be two-dimensional and three-dimensional if you have a stage with effects. Well, here you need to appeal to everybody, you know, auditory, visual and kinesthetic, auditory, digital. So there's so much to understand if you want to really impact people as a speaker. So mm -hmm. it helped, but I still had a long way to go. And I still got a long way to go, mm -hmm. but it certainly helped me a lot. Okay. Now, you run a successful programme. It's called Power to Succeed, and you run this in, in London. Yes. And um, I've read some of the, or listened to some of the testimonials, and lots oh, of people great. have said it's completely changed their lives. So what, what's, perhaps just give us a few tips about uh, how you've managed to do this. Well, Power to Succeed, um, first of all, we're no, I'm going to say this up front, we're not a miracle workers, okay? No, no. So um, we, we give people the tools, and it's up to them to implement it. I grew really frustrated with the self-development industry that there was a lot of information seminars out there, but no one was offering an experience, all by one person who I work very closely with, was giving the experience of how to shift things. Mm -hmm. uh, and two years ago, like a typical entrepreneur, everything fell apart for me. I lost the girl I was in love with, I lost, almost lost my business, my clients, mm -hmm. everything. You know, typical, how am I going to pay my rent, how am I going to eat this week, that kind of story. And I got really frustrated that I had all this information, but application as, as, as an experience was missing. Mm -hmm. So I started to devise the Empowering Coaching System, which is what I use, and do things experientially. So I took processes and embedded them as an experience. Therefore, the shifts are deeper working with the unconscious mind, whether you want it or not. Mm -hmm. And that way, I got much bigger shifts, and I released a lot of my stuff. And we all have our stuff, yeah. and if anyone claims they don't, whatever. <laughs> They're in denial. <laughs> They're in double denial is what we call, because when they say, no, I'm not in denial, that's what we call double denial. Double, yes. Right? And then I found that it really shifted stuff for me. And we're talking some very deep-rooted experiences. So I was like, wait a minute, it's my responsibility to share this. Mm -hmm. So we started, uh, we, we put Power to Succeed together, and um, we've now done several, this will be our seventh um, this weekend. Mm -hmm. And because it's an experience, it's not a me feeding you all this information, because it's an experience, People actually get to where they need to go versus being told or, you know, through a PowerPoint presentation, being instructed where they need to go. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's been really impactful. That's why people have had massive shifts in the two days. But, of course, that's just the beginning. There's, yes. there's a long term yeah. that we need to look at as well. Uh -huh. And um, with giving these workshops, you'll see... And, and dealing with companies, you'll see whether they're big companies or small companies, you see patterns, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and one of the biggest patterns is our judgment, uh, is our self-judgment and it's external judgment and how much we hand over our power. Yes. You know, yeah. we hand over this power to all these people that half the time we don't know uh, and we can <laughs> elevate them and then, it, we, then we get in our own way because... We, we make ourselves really small. This is what we call the big eye and the little eye. Yes. And um, you see, the big eye really comes from a place of service and confidence and certainty. But a lot of us live in the little eye, little me. And that's really devastating because a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners won't allow themselves to truly flourish mm. because they're in the little eye. And they won't stand there in the belief 
that what they have to offer, whatever it is they have to offer, can truly change lives. And that doesn't have to be from a coaching angle. It can just be the concept behind what it is they want to do with their lives. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah interesting. Um, you've also written a book, and it's called It's Your... It, it's Right... It's your right to be wrong. That's, that's right. right. Yes. It's your right to be wrong. That's right. I thought, well, that's an interesting title. That's right. It's right that you got the title right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I've written two. So it's your right to be wrong was the first yeah. one. I was looking at that one actually. I'm thinking I've got the title wrong. And this is uh, it's yeah. your right to be wrong in relationships. Yes. Yeah. And um, what it is, I got really fascinated. I'm still fascinated by people's psychology around mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I spent a whole year interviewing entrepreneurs, successful and unsuccessful, through my radio show. What is the psychology? Why do we hate getting it wrong so much? I've always had that go get. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not afraid so much of getting it wrong, but a lot of people are. Yeah, no. And we managed to um, get it to a point through the research that we broke it down to people associate pain, judgment and punishment to getting it wrong. So then I wrote the book, It's Your Right to Be Wrong, all about that, all about things like rejection is impersonal, all about um, there's only feedback, how to keep going. You know, it's a very small book. It's no bigger than this one. Mm -hmm. And then someone approached me and said, I really liked your book. I'm a relationship expert. Can we apply this to relationships? Uh -huh. And I was like, absolutely. The fundamental thing, if, you're, if we're going out and you won't voice yourself because you feel that whatever you say is wrong then the dynamics is going to be completely imbalanced. Yes. Yeah. Then you won't express yourself, you'll shut down, you'll be hard done by, and you'll explode at some point. And resent for the wrong reasons. Exactly. You know, when there's no need to. Yeah. It's yeah. communication, isn't it? Absolutely, communication, but also there's, you won't open <coughs> up. Yeah. And, you know, what happens in one part of the relationship will transpire everywhere. Yeah. So then, of course, all the other... And then if you're a mother, then that will come across to the children and vice versa. And then you find yourself very isolated in the relationship all because of the fear of saying the wrong thing or mm. being wrong. So that's why I wrote the second one as well. Would you say it would help people as well to try and remember when they were quite young, before all the social conditioning and things, when you've, you found life was absolutely wonderful, everything was fantastic, and you thought you could do anything as well? You know, nobody there to say, no, you, why, why do you think you can do that? You know, yeah, nobody it, there to judge you and make you think, oh, well, maybe I can't. It can take you back to there. Yeah. I think you need to do some work as well, obviously, to clear yes, that stuff. But to, but yeah, just as an image. It's going back know. to that innocent, that child, I can yeah. do anything. Okay, I walk into a wall and it'll hurt, but, you know, I can climb this fence. Yeah. I can keep climbing until they do. Yeah. Uh, and that does get chiseled out of us for various reasons, you know, yeah. by our environment, by our education, by experiences. You know, suddenly we become aware of social pressure. And it's not something that... There's a manual. Like, no, no one goes, do you know what? Now we're going to teach you to be wrong. <laughs> right? It doesn't quite happen that way. And, yeah, you can go back to that innocent space. Thanks. OK. Well, thank you very much, uh, both of you. And I'm sure that we'll see you back on the coast very soon. Oh, yes. And we'll be keeping in touch with you, Nami, as well, about Malaga Business Minds and their activities. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you.